Today's wrestling news is quite honestly shocking, and as always, I'm going to have the timestamps in the description down below, but I'm going to encourage you to watch this one all the way through. We're going to kick things off with CM Punk and John Moxley because there's been a lot of talk about this. My initial thoughts still remain the same, so if you guys have been watching my updates on Twitch or on YouTube, then you know I was not a fan of a squash match happening in three minutes. Now, as somebody who talks about wrestling every day, it's pretty obvious where AEW is headed with this. CM Punk turning heel. And look, I get it. I know what they're trying to do. I understand the story that's at play here. But now a new report came out about the reason why this was done. And I just still don't think this makes sense. And I understand that a lot of people will not agree with me on my opinion on this matter. But the truth is this. The idea is to turn CM Punk heel. And conveniently, this all happens while there's rumors and talk of CM Punk being unhappy, backstage heat, backstage drama, and whatever it may be. Now, it's actually being said that John Moxley was the one who pitched this idea, and the plan for All Out still remains CM Punk versus John Moxley. And this is AEW's way of intensifying the drama for this major main event match for the pay per view. Now, here's the thing AEW promoted this match as the biggest match in AEW Dynamite history. And I agree with that sentiment. However, what we really received did not feel deserving for the biggest match in AEW Dynamite history. I think the expectations were pretty damn clear. AEW has put on some amazing matches before. People saw a great opportunity to unify the championship belt. And AEW did something I would have never expected from Tony Khan. So the idea that CM Punk is not actually injured obviously is a good thing. First and foremost, health always comes first. But secondly, it makes me wonder why they had to do this in three minutes. Why not do a 20 minute match? Why not do something different? I, I just feel like there's a million different ways to go through this opportunity to tell a bigger story. The fact that it happened in three minutes and the fact that he was injured and lost the match. Now, all of a sudden we're supposed to expect that his injury was bad enough for him to lose this match, but he'll be able to come back within time. I understand what Tony Khan's trying to do here. I understand the play that is being called, but I just don't think it's the right decision. And the fact that CM Punk is not really injured just doesn't really help it at all. I know some people really enjoy this decision, but it seems like most of you have been scratching your head as well. Um, but now that we have some sort of backstage insight, here's what I would say to AEW. If you want to turn CM Punk heel, there's a million ways to do it. This didn't have to be one of them. It feels like a very cheap way to get people to watch your TV show and then to under deliver such a big promise. It just felt like a dirty move, felt like something Vince McMahon would have done. And it's a move that if Vince McMahon would have done it, the outrage would have been a lot worse. Uh, but ultimately CM Punk turning heel at all out to recapture his world championship. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, but also I think everybody's kind of waiting for the MJF story to kind of come back into play. So we'll see how this all works out, but ultimately I'm just simply not a fan of it. You don't have to agree. You can disagree, but I want to know your guys' opinions down below. Very interesting talk about Thunder Rosa in AEW. So conveniently, uh, Voices of Wrestling dropped a podcast and basically, uh, there was some stuff that was alluded to. Uh, basically towards Thunder Rosa and Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. So on the VOW Instant Reaction podcast, they described Rosa and Britt Baker as mortal enemies. Hayter's issues with Rosa seem to have transpired after Rosa inadvertently broke her nose uh, during their match for the World Championship at Battle of the Belts on August 6, 2022. Hayter went on to finish the match despite suffering a broken nose, but this caused a lot of issues between the two. VOW also noted that Rosa hid in the bathroom in fear of possible repercussions for giving Jamie Hayter a broken nose during the match. Uh, this is really strange to me because AEW had Thunder Rosa cut a promo backstage and announced that she is injured and they're going to do a fatal four-way match to crown the interim women's championship. Now, I can do a whole two-hour podcast on why interim championships are bad for wrestling, but again, AEW has decided to go this route. Um, by the way, I don't like interim championship belts in wrestling or MMA for those who care. Nonetheless, uh, basically the belief now is that Rosa isn't actually injured, uh, but she was being removed from television. So that way they can cool things off in the women's division. So AEW is faking an injury storyline to pull your women's championship out of a match because 
of an accidental thing that happened in the ring. Guys, I don't know what Tony Khan and AEW are doing here. I don't know why this is the decision being made. And truth be told, this type of backstage drama is just not a good look for AEW. Again, these are things that you expect from Vince McMahon's version of WWE. You don't expect this from Tony Khan. And the fact that Tony Khan is making reactionary decisions such as this one is just a big head scratcher. I already feel like Thunder Rosa deserved a way better title reign, and she was not given that. So now you're going to crown an interim champion because you decided to pull her off TV because an accident happened? I don't know. It just doesn't sit well with me. But look, AEW is going to keep doing things this way. It's very clear that the momentum has shifted towards WWE. Wrestling fans are paying a lot of attention to this. And now we have another match at All Out with no sort of storyline build. It's just not a good experience to be a fan at this moment in time, which is why things are so funny right now because there's been a lot of talk about backstage heat and backstage drama. Well, one thing that's been swept under the rug is actually Eddie Kingston. Now, everybody is talking about this. PW Insider, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, uh, Wrestling Observer. I mean, guys, you name it, people are talking about it. So, uh... Dave Meltzer had actually reported that Kingston was secretly suspended from AEW a few weeks ago after getting into a verbal dispute with Sammy Guevara. However, the suspension is already over. So this is something that's been completely kept quiet. Now, Guevara and Kingston were obviously feuding because of, you know, the BCC slash, uh, you know, we had the feud between BCC, Blood and Guts, and then Jericho Appreciation Society. Now, on the August 3rd edition of AEW Dynamite, Kingston interrupted his Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti video package to say that he got a contract for a match at All Out between himself and Guevara and told Guevara to sign the contract. Uh, Guevara actually accepted this, uh, this sort of challenge, but none of this stuff aired on the August 10th uh, Rampage taping. So now this is where things get really chaotic because people are saying, well, is AEW continuing to blur the lines? And the fact that this wasn't announced publicly by AEW tells me that they're not trying to blur the lines. Things are really hectic backstage. Now, obviously, we got a lot of people coming forward talking about bad booking and all this stuff. There is something happening in AEW and the backstage environment is clearly an issue. If that is a type of work that AEW wants to present to its audience, I think that is a very silly and stupid mistake. Sammy Guevara getting beat up by Eddie Kingston backstage and then Eddie Kingston being suspended for it. I don't know why you would want to work fans on this when you have a pay-per-view to build. If your concern is to work fans, then why like what what's the point? Your your job is to sell tickets and create compelling TV. This stuff isn't even being mentioned by the company. It's not even being presented on TV. To me, it would just seem pointless to be a work. But nonetheless, there is a lot of stuff happening in this company. I hope they figure it out because when AEW is good, they are very good. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below.